Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So everyone on Twitter these days has been talking about the new Netflix documentary Seaspiracy, so I decided to check it out for myself and see what all the drama is about. I love watching science and nature documentaries, so I thought I'd give it a go. I knew very little about this movie going into watching it, and I tried to avoid reading other people's opinions on it so that I would be able to better form my own. So when I turned the movie on, I was unpleasantly surprised at how bad it was just in the first few minutes. If you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen a brief thread of my thoughts as I was watching it that I literally couldn't keep to myself at the time. I was going to make a much longer, more in-depth review because there's a lot to talk about with this movie, but I feel other people have tackled the main issues much more eloquently than I could, so the links to those videos are in the description below. There are, however, a few things I did want to mention that are, I think are also worth talking about in addition to the science. Before I jump into my review, I want to preface it by saying that I'm about six weeks away from earning an undergraduate degree in marine science from Boston University, so I am educated on these issues. Although I think this documentary touched on very important topics that people definitely should know and be talking about, a lot of the basic science is dramatized or presented in a way that I feel is purposefully misleading. I want to be clear in my message that the marine scientists reacting to this movie are not reacting to the issues being brought up nor am I campaigning against eating less fish. I think we all need to be able to recognize that you can be in support of solving the problem without supporting a documentary that uses misleading or outdated information, sensationalization, and conspiracy theories to get their message across. Ask yourself, how much misinformation am I willing to accept for the sake of a good cause? And am I able to accurately determine if it is a good cause if they needed to use misinformation to sell it to me as such? It's a very slippery slope when we start accepting lies and inaccuracies for the sake of a broader argument because it makes it impossible for those not educated on these issues to determine what is fact and what is not. I fear this documentary created a few false dichotomies, the main two being these. You either like this film or you don't care about the ocean. And you have to choose between overfishing or plastic pollution. To care about plastic pollution is to care about it more than overfishing, which is simply the wrong thing to do. However, these are not true, and we can acknowledge and work towards fixing more than one ocean conservation issue at a time. I've structured this video into multiple parts, focusing on main issues with this film besides simply debunking the science. Again, I want to implore you to check the description and watch other videos with explanations of the scientific inaccuracies. So let's get into it. Seaspiracy is a new Netflix documentary by a filmmaker named Ali Tabrizi. It follows this journey of learning about issues threatening the health of the oceans, oceans, such as overfishing, plastic pollution, and whaling. The film starts with footage of him going to the beach and to a SeaWorld type location as a child and describing how much he loved and how romantic and mystical the ocean was. He always wanted to make a movie about it, so he did. As far as the actual storyline of this film goes, it's pretty all over the place. He starts talking about his love for whales and dolphins, and then jumps to how plastic pollution affected him and what he could do about it. And then he goes to how he didn't know overfishing was a thing, and then kind of rotates between these three general topics for the duration of the film, loosely connecting them. Then there's a less than 10 minute segment about the exploitation and enslavement of fishermen. This film actually gets really dark here, and I'll talk more about this later, but this was the hardest part for me to summarize my thoughts on because he just does such a bad job with it. He then drops the subject entirely and moves on to sustainable whaling in Norway and how we should all stop eating fish. But the plot is the least egregious offense of this documentary, so I'm just gonna move on. Every other offense of this film is a direct result of the filmmaker's massive ego. I've actually never seen someone make so many huge issues center around themselves in the way that this guy managed to do. Just the very fact that he's making this documentary at all tells you a lot about what he thinks of himself, given that he has no qualifications or background knowledge on any of the issues plaguing the ocean. That's not just my opinion of him, a big part of the movie is that he didn't know any of this stuff. He says at the beginning he didn't know what he was getting himself into when he set out to make a documentary about how incredible our oceans are. But after noticing reports of sea life found with plastic in their stomachs, he decided to investigate into these issues further. He says he didn't know things a lot, so I'm not just assuming he didn't know the science and complexity of these issues. And that wouldn't even be so bad if he centered his documentary around people who did know what they were doing, if he made it about scientists or fisheries managers or anyone who actually works in the field, but he didn't. 
The documentary is explicitly about him, how everything affects him, and how he is so brave and so important for doing this. I'm guessing he did this because it helps him to sell it as a conspiracy theory. He thinks that since he specifically didn't know these things, then no one does, and it's his duty to tell us. Even when he's talking to industry professionals, he never lets you forget who the real star of the show is, either by including his voice and asking me questions, or actually being in the shot when he interviews someone, or cutting back to his reaction of what they're saying. He's been accused by the Plastic Pollution Coalition of cherry-picking sections of our comments to support their own narrative. Just from having edited videos and being interviewed for video, as well as being familiar with the work of a few people interviewed, I could tell some places where sentences were edited together to sound like they were said as a complete thought, or sections of an interview were used to back up something he was talking about that's not actually what the interviewee was responding to. I will say that this is pretty common practice in documentaries and visual storytelling, but that's where ethics, good faith, and an actual understanding of the topic become extremely important. There's a lot of scientific inaccuracies and misrepresentations that I recognized immediately that are clearly a result of him having no formal training or appreciation in finding credible sources and presenting information in an accurate and truthful way. Maybe this is just me nitpicking at this point, but this graph pretty much summarizes what I'm talking about. This information is presented as a graph with an x and a y axis, meaning that as one variable changes across the x axis, another variable changes as a result of that across the y axis. But it's really representing just one data point. And the data it's representing isn't very clear. In this section, he's talking about marine vegetation's ability to store carbon. He says losing 1% of blue carbon ecosystems is equivalent, to is equivalent to releasing the emissions of 97 million cars. However, he doesn't give any context to that number, such as emissions over what period of time, and 97 million sounds like a big number to the average person, but he doesn't give us any idea if that's a lot compared to the number of cars on the road during that same period of time. As I said earlier, there's a lot of things in this documentary that are true and worth discussing, but my main issue is the presentation of the information. I'm really hesitant to call this movie a documentary because people expect a certain level of credibility and journalistic standards and integrity out of documentaries. Instead, this is a drama movie. <laughs> it's an exercise in visual storytelling. I know that all documentaries have to find a balance between presenting the truth and keeping people entertained, and some find a better balance of this than others, but this just takes entertainment to a whole new level. In my opinion, this documentary is the TMZ version of a New York Times article. I also think the fact that this is distributed by Netflix adds a certain level of false credibility because people think Netflix is trustworthy. But that's a false sense of security given the fact that Netflix will host pretty much any content they think paying subscribers will watch and will drive new traffic to their platform. I said this in my Draws review, but creators have a responsibility for the message that they send with their content. And the message that I got out of this movie is that it's okay to misrepresent facts for the sake of making an argument. Maybe it's just me, but that's not the values I think we should be promoting as a society. This part really bothered me and took me some time to explain why. I'm still not really sure if I'll do a good job articulating this, but I'll give it my best shot. Around an hour and five minutes, he talks about people being exploited on commercial fishing vessels, either being forced to work in horrific conditions or being outright enslaved, which is all very terrible. I'm sure this is happening, unfortunately, as it's not uncommon for vulnerable people to be exploited for cheaper free labor, especially in poor countries that don't have many laws protecting their working class. <sighs> I actually found this to be the most interesting part of this documentary, as it's the part I knew least about, and I'm very glad he brought light to this issue. However, I was left so sad and so disappointed by what he did with it. He again centers this issue around himself by praising his investigative work leading to this discovery, again equating him learning something for the first time with him being the one to discover the problem. And then at an international seafood expo, he questions a representative at a Thai seafood booth about slave labor. We don't know who this guy is, and he clearly didn't agree to be in this documentary, but he basically has no idea what this filmmaker is talking about because why would he? He's the representative the company sends to seafood expos, not the captain of the slave ship. If this is some big underground operation, I don't think it serves any benefit to harass a sales rep at a seafood expo about the enslavement of fishermen. If the company is trying to cover this up, why would they educate their salesmen on it and then have them talk to anyone who walks up to their booth? This is not the first time he does this, by the way. 
Earlier in the film, he walks into a Mitsubishi office and asks two unidentified people to interview them on why they're wiping out the bluefin tuna populations, and understandably, they want nothing to do with him. He takes this very personally and uses it as evidence for his conspiracy theory, but anyone who works in ocean conservation or fisheries know that you can't just show up somewhere unannounced you expect is doing something illegal and shove cameras and microphones into people's faces and expect them to cooperate and give you whatever you want. Anyway, he then makes a very big deal about how dangerous it is for him to talk to formerly enslaved people. He emphasizes how much risk he's putting himself in for even doing this and once again becomes the hero of his own story by being brave enough to fly to Bangkok, Thailand to talk to these people. Even if he genuinely was somehow endangering himself for doing so, I just can't get over how self-important he felt to make a very big point of this with zero mention of how he might be putting these people in even greater danger by talking to them on camera. We have no idea how far removed from slavery these people are, but the man being interviewed said, I could be hunted down for talking to you. This filmmaker, Ali, gets to get on an airplane and leave the country to go back to Britain and never have to deal with any of this again. But these people do not have the same level of safety and distance that he gets to enjoy. He doesn't portray the gravity or severity of the situation beyond how it affects him personally. And by doing so, he does them a massive disservice. He even asks one of them to take him to the slave ship so he can film it, completely disregarding the physical safety and emotional well-being of the person. It takes an unbelievable level of selfishness and disregard for other people to ask a formerly enslaved person who just told you he could be hunted down for talking to you to take you to the ship he was enslaved on. I just can't imagine spending a day sitting down with formerly enslaved people and listening to the stories of those who have experienced some of the very worst humanity has to offer and coming out of that conversation still thinking I'm the most important thing in the world. I obviously don't know his relationship with these people and he might have paid them for being in his documentary. I don't know and so I'm not going to speculate on that. But what I can say is that he offers the viewer absolutely no resources to help these people further. He doesn't give us any information on any organization that either put him in contact with them or is trying to help them in any way. He gives us no information on their current situation or what we can do from our position to help them further besides not eating fish. I'm a vegetarian, so I'm clearly not opposed to people giving up fish. I agree that people don't see or know where their food comes from and all over the world systems exist to exploit vulnerable communities to power the food industry. But I also recognize that not eating any one product is not a universal or equitable solution to this problem. Many economies rely on the fishing industry and to take away the income of an already vulnerable community serves the potential to make these people even more desperate for a living. Not only that, but leaving the solution at telling Karen in Indiana to cut fish out of her diet grossly oversimplifies the problem, the circumstances that lead to these terrible working conditions, and removes the blame entirely from the entities actually responsible to the consumer who, as the documentary says, it has no way of actually making an informed decision. My main point here is that if you want to use your wealth, privilege, and platform to advocate and share the stories of those who do not have these things, it is so important to center them and their experience, not how you are affected by their experience. As a viewer, I couldn't help but feel that he was only furthering their exploitation by featuring them in his documentary and sensationalizing their condition to further his argument about a conspiracy theory that he made up. He ends the scene with him being in danger for talking to them and leaves the country, leaving us with no way to help them or any idea what happened to them after they left. Unfortunately, in my searching, I haven't found any clear solutions to the problem besides demanding action from the Thai government. If you or someone you know has more information on this issue and how we could potentially help these people, please share it with me. I've left articles from the New York Times, the Associated Press, and other resources in the description if you want to read further into this issue. And I will warn that it's very graphic and sometimes stomach-churning content, but I think this issue deserves the attention no matter how uncomfortable it makes us to learn about it. Just based on the name, I knew anything trying to sell a conspiracy theory about a heavily funded and researched topic is probably going to be BS. Turns out I was right. <laughs> There's no real conspiracy theory that he even talks about. He uses the phrase, no one is talking about this a lot in hopes that you'll actually believe that he's some genius who uncovered something big. 
but the reality of the situation is that all of the information he prevent, presents is publicly available online. I mean, I do almost have a degree in marine science and I was aware of almost everything that he talked about and I'm not in on any multinational conspiracies to keep this information away from the public. Nothing he presents is new information and there are industry professionals who have spent decades studying and trying to educate the public on these issues. What he actually means to say is that he specifically did not know these things and since his mind cannot fathom a world bigger than himself, he's convinced that there's been some big intergovernmental cover-up to keep him and anyone who isn't actively looking from knowing about these issues. He also mentions many times that what he's doing is so dangerous and could be potentially arrested or even murdered for trying to uncover the secrets of the fishing industry. He has many clips of him or someone else saying it's extremely dangerous and then cuts to him on what we're supposed to think is an illegal fishing vessel and he also shows footage of sharks and other charismatic megafauna being caught up in commercial fishing gear. And I think we're supposed to think he got this footage in some highly covert, dangerous operation, but it's not very clear whether or not he was the one filming these things. And just a side note on this guy's ego again, he says during this scene, species I had never seen in my entire life were dying in the nets before I could even appreciate them. Once again, centering this issue around himself and his own inability to appreciate the cool animals as though someone ruined his whale watching or shark diving vacation excursion. Towards the beginning of the film, we see him on a cliff with a view of the bay below filming these supposedly highly covert operations. And he says multiple times that the police are after him, but nothing ever comes of that. Even when he does say these things, we're looking at police on a speedboat in the water, so I'm not sure why they would be in speedboats looking for him in the ocean when they have no reason to believe he's there. And it's pretty clear they're not looking for him at all, and he just wants us to believe he's important. Then, later on, when he's interviewing a formerly enslaved person, he quickly ends it and there's all this commotion, and he says the police are after them because, quote, someone has reported us for filming without permits. But dude, you're making a feature length documentary that you're going to sell to a mega media corporation and filming in another country with no permits or legal right to do so. All it did was emphasize how self-important this guy is. He thinks it's a massive conspiracy cover up and that these big institutions are out to get him because he's facing the consequences of his own actions. God forbid the government of Thailand wants to prevent you from exploiting their most vulnerable population so you can go back to your wealthy nation and become even more wealthy from sensationalizing the plight of enslaved people. But you're right, it's a conspiracy theory and they're all out to get you. In conclusion, I think what has gotten most marine scientists riled up over the film isn't the content, but the context in which it's presented. By creating a conspiracy theory and sensationalizing these issues, he presents a one-size-fits-all solution to multiple problems that he didn't spend much time accurately exploring. It's very easy to get a surface-level understanding of these issues, tell everyone to stop eating fish, and leave it there. But if that was honestly the best and only solution, people who have been studying these issues for a lot longer than he has would have fought hard to do it by now. If you do have the ability to stop eating fish or you can purchase fish from a supermarket that can tell you exactly where the fish was caught, by who, and the entire life story of the fish, then yes, I think you should. But it doesn't make sense to then turn around and judge those who cannot or will not simply because you have the ability to. He centers every issue around himself, making the viewer believe that he is the first and only person to ever attempt to communicate these issues to the public, and in the process oversimplifies and underemphasizes the vast complexity of these issues. It also misleads the public into distrusting the actual scientific and governmental authorities on the topic for the opinion of a rich white man who decided to pick up a camera one day. Overfishing in plastic pollution is a very big and deep problem that I urge everyone to read more about. Since this is a review, I will say I don't recommend watching this documentary, but I also don't want to discourage anyone from being able to form their own opinion. But if you do watch this documentary, don't stop there. I've left a bunch of links in the description as well as names of scientists who work in this area so you can continue to read more. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got something out of it and I will see you in the next one.